Hola a todo el mundo, vamos a comenzar en breve, eh, vamos a dar unos minutitos que se pone a grabar ahora mismo la sesión y empezaremos enseguida en un minutito, empezamos la sesión de este webinar. Espero que se oiga bien y todo vaya correctamente. Ok, ya se está grabando, then. Uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, thank you very much for everybody to come in today with us and to stay with us and uh, in this webinar about uh, energy center maintenance. But this is a very, very, very novedous uh, theme, a very important theme that uh, we can follow a study in the uh, in this cycle of webinars that I'm making in the AEE Spain chapter. So. Uh, let's start with our opponent. Our opponent today, our speaker is Fadi. Fadi Saksir that we have it in the in the webcam now. And uh, okay, Fadi uh, is a very good friend. I I know him in in 1918 where he received uh, an award for the best uh, energy engineering in AEE. So okay, it is a very interesting work that he do about the different Uh, maintenance uh, he has too much experience in this in this sector so uh, fadi is uh, fadi al saksir is an author keynote speaker lecturer and fm professional who works in imar facility management and the dubai foundate the world's tallest performing foundation located at dubai united arab emirates also he's a lecturer for master degrees students in Elliot Watt University Dubai campus and the inventor of the energy center maintenance model and the author of the book energy center maintenance a green maintenance system he graduated from Jordan University of Science and Technology with mechanical engineering degree and from Elliot Watt University with master of science in energy He also has multiple professional certifications such as Lead Green Associate, Certified Energy Manager, Reliever Center for Maintenance Facilitor, Six Sigma Black Belt, Strategic Thinking and Planning, uh, EFQM Internal Assessor, with over 14 years of practical experience in design, construction, operation and management of different types of facilities such as hospital, hotels, malls, residences, properties, and iconic buildings. He's always thinking of more efficient ways to manage facilities and buildings. He is very passionate about finding ways to reduce energy consume, consumption, the impact on the environment by developing effective procedures and policies in place and implementing them. So it's for me a pleasure to present you Uh, this special event and this interesting event. I would like to uh, give a thank you to Fadi to make this effort to stay with us today and to talk about this uh, very novedous uh, method of, of maintenance. Uh, before to start the presentation of Fadi, uh, I would like to talk about the membership of the Spanish chapter. Uh, so uh, in this occasion, Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to uh, talk in uh, in Spanish for for all you, in order to understand, in order to show sorry, Fadi. Uh, gracias a todo el mundo <laughs> por estar aquí esta tarde con nosotros. Uh, como os he dicho, pues nada, el seminario y el webinar uh, sobre sobre mantenimiento centrado en energía, muy interesante técnica desarrollada por Fadi, que es muy interesante y como sabéis. Eh, pues bueno, la asociación, el capítulo español de la asociación, pues es eh, bueno, una asociación de ingenieros de energía muy importante, que estamos ligados, como todos sabéis, a la Asociación de Ingenieros de Energía estadounidense, con más de 80.000 miembros en todo el mundo, aproximadamente. Entonces, bueno, pues hay eh, muchísimas oportunidades de trabajo. Os animamos en todos los momentos a que os apuntéis a la asociación y que os hagáis miembros y que nos ayudéis en el desarrollo, tanto en los webinars, hay cursos, hay todo tipo de actividades, jornadas cuando se pueden hacer presenciales y podemos hacer mucho desarrollo en networking y sobre todo muy buena compañía entre todos eh, los miembros de la asociación que nos ayudamos en todo lo que nos, nos hace falta. Realmente esta es una asociación de personas, no es una asociación de empresas, con lo cual 
eh, aquí estamos todos para ayudarnos y eh, colaborar en los problemas que nos surjan y en las posibilidades que tenemos todos de trabajar juntos. ¿vale? Así que os animo siempre que podáis pues a, a apuntaros a la asociación y a estar con nosotros en los diferentes eventos, webinars que hacemos y cursos que vamos impartiendo. Bueno, sin mucho más, eh, I'm going to uh, give the word to Fadi in order to start the presentation. So in this occasion, I'm going to share my, my own screen in order to, to do it. Okay. Thank you, Alberto. Um, yes. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here with uh, all the professionals in, in Spain and thanks for AE Spain chapter for having me with you tonight. It's a pleasure for me to be uh, with you and I hope um, you will find benefits from the presentation that we will go through. It has actually um, a story rather than just being a technical presentation, which I will tell you about as we as we go on, just to make sure that we are committed with the with the time. Um, I would like to keep this as an interactive um, presentation. You can, if you think, if you feel that I need to stop and repeat something, feel free to stop me. If you have um, certain questions and uh, you like to ask it during uh, the presentation, feel free to do so. If you wish to keep it till the end of the presentation, I'm also uh, ready to have uh, some Q and A's towards the end to answer uh, as many of the questions as possible. So thank you so much again, Alberto, for having me and uh, I can start the presentation uh, now. Okay, if I go to the first uh, slide, thanks a lot. Um, we will be talking a little bit here about uh, the evolution of, of maintenance in buildings and uh, how that maintenance activities are linked into energy and uh, how it started and where the maintenance industry is going. Uh, before 1950s, the maintenance used to be called as uh, reactive maintenance, and that was done just before the manufacturing uh, revolution. And during that time, when we say reactive maintenance, reactive maintenance is called as run to failure, which means if there is a machinery that is running, or an equipment in a building, we don't do any kind of maintenance for that machine, and we wait for it to fail, and then we fix it. That's how the maintenance started uh, in, in pre-1950s. Now, some people thought at that time that if we don't maintain these machines, that means we will be reducing the cost of the maintenance, uh, which is true for a certain extent, but what uh, the experts at that time missed that the impact of losing the equipment uh, and the cost of losing an equipment is actually much more than the maintenance cost that they would have uh, done. So at that time, it had some sort of advantages and disadvantages. The reason that in the manufacturing industry, they were trying to avoid doing normal maintenance is in order not to shut down the production line and depend only on reactive. They thought that fix will be always quick, but in some cases it was catastrophic and it cost them more cost than uh, the what, what should have been done. Now, post the 1950s, the, the, the industry... Yes, there is any question, please? Okay, yeah. now. Sí. There's no question. Uh, 12, 3, no, there is no I, question. I didn't... No question. Okay. No Thank question. you. Uh, okay. I'm going to Very good. make silence. Okay. Pero en realidad no gestiona él, pero bueno, sí. Al 12, 3, 50, que es el de clima. Wait a moment, please. Al 14, 4, 9, 4, que es el de baixa tensión. 4, 9, 4. Sí, sí, sí. 
son responsables técnicos. Very good. I think Very I can good. carry on, no? Yes, okay. It's now we can continue. Sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. It's okay, everyone. it's okay. No problem. Um, so after the reactive maintenance, post the 1950s, we came into preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance, we call it uh, sometimes the time-based maintenance. So in a certain time, after, let's say for a car, a car, for example, we have to do the maintenance for the car every 10,000 kilometers. Uh, so we call it time-based maintenance and a certain inter intervals we have to maintain our equipments in the facilities or the cars or the manufacturing. And uh, that kind of maintenance uh, seemed to be a better option uh, for the manufacturing industry as well because the breakdowns or the uh, failures uh, reduced a lot. So there was a good continuation of the business in, 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 in different kind of industries. The uh, challenge, though, that uh, that was uh, faced, that it's very expensive uh, to do that kind of maintenance, and sometimes we found that we find that we're doing that maintenance without the need of doing it. So I send my car to the agency to do the maintenance every 10,000 kilometers without having any indication that there is a failure that is happening in the car, which made the the, the maintenance industry to evolve to the next. Uh, maintenance type, which is predictive maintenance. That was around 1960s. Uh, predictive maintenance is one of the still uh, uh, followed maintenance models till today, and we call it condition-based maintenance. Now, the beauty about it that this kind of maintenance is done based on the actual condition of the machine. So if I go to the car example again, you get sometimes a message that um, the, there is a vibration in the motor. So the motor has no issues yet, but there is a vibration in that motor and we try to um, uh, fix that problem before it happens. So that's actually what is the predictive maintenance is about. And now um, the good thing about it that is not really expensive as preventive maintenance as it was, but pretty much effective. So the, the failure rate was uh, low the cost was low and the machine reliability was uh, uh, really good. But from time to time, we were able to find some failures that happened, which led the industry to go again to the next uh, maintenance model, which is called reliability-centered maintenance. And that was invented in 1980s. Now, reliability-centered maintenance is very simple. It's a combination between preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance. So instead of having only one at a time, uh, we said, okay, we need to do a preventive maintenance maybe once every six months instead of once every three months. And during these uh, six months, we will have a look at indicators to tell us if there's a failure that will happen or not, or if there is an impact on the reliability of the asset or not. Now, these uh, two together uh, followed with something called root cause analysis. When a failure happens, uh, we do something called root cause analysis in order to eliminate the cause of the failure. And that cause uh, elimination is also part of reliability-centered maintenance model. So basically, it has three components. The first one is preventive maintenance. The second one is predictive maintenance. And the third one is uh, root cause analysis and failure uh, detection and elimination. In 2012, and that's the nice part of the story, and maybe 2015 for myself, uh, my, I was, I was uh, thinking about how we maintain the machines in the buildings, and uh, we definitely follow the first, the first four uh, models of maintenance. And if you look at all these uh, models of maintenance, it actually works around the reliability of the asset. So it makes sure that the asset is still, or the equipment uh, running, but it doesn't really talk much about how efficient that operation is. And I will give you an example of a car uh, that, it's actually my car, 
uh, when one a few years ago, uh, I, 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 it was 2009 model, and I think it was in 2015 or 16 when I noticed that uh, deficiency. The car was very reliable. I take it and I drive it for, I mean, hundreds of kilometers without any issue. But I started noticing that uh, oil consumption is increasing by time. So it's a reliable car, but it's not, it's not energy efficient car. So when I took it to the agent to, to fix the problem, he said, well, in our normal maintenance, in our preventive maintenance, we don't look at the energy consumption. That's a different maintenance that we need to raise a separate uh, car, uh, card for it, which made me think about the way that we maintain our facilities and, and, and the way that we maintain our equipment is actually all centered around reliability. And that's why we say reliability centered maintenance. And that made me think that we need to do a new maintenance model that complements reliability centered maintenance, which is energy centered maintenance. So the maintenance uh, model itself is centered about energy around energy uh, conservation or energy uh, cost reduction and so on. Now, the, as we go through the, 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 the presentation, I'll be talking more in details about it, but energy-centered maintenance does not work alone. It has to work with reliability-centered maintenance. So we have to keep looking at the reliability part of the equipment and the energy part of the equipment. So having these two together will give you a most reliable and most efficient uh, machine uh, at the same time or equipment. If we can move to the next uh, slide. So this is a simple uh, comparison between the first the three types of, uh, of maintenance. The first one is a reactive maintenance. I will not repeat it. So this is non-set. We don't do it. It's just a run to failure. Whenever a failure happens, we go with it. The impact of the failure is really high and on the production cost and on the stopping a factory, for example, because of it. Predictive maintenance is time-based maintenance. It's low compared to reactive maintenance in terms of cost. Predictive maintenance, uh, the last one, obviously, is that's preventive maintenance. Predictive maintenance is the lowest in cost because we maintain, as I said, based on the condition rather than just based on time. And uh, the last two, you, you won't find it here. You'll find it in the next slide because I'll bring more details into it. If we can move to the next one, please. Now, we'll talk about what is the uh, difference between the tra traditional uh, maintenance, planned preventive maintenance, and the traditional predictive maintenance. Now, if you look at the part on the right side, uh, where traditional PPM, PPM means planned preventive maintenance. We'll talk here about, let's start setting the ground for an air handling unit, for example. In a normal planned preventive maintenance, what we do, we do a tension for the belt. The fan has a belt, it might be loose. We do so that kind of tension. If we find that the shaft for the fan is not aligned, we do some sort of alignment for it. We could do cleaning for the coil, cleaning for the strainers, and uh, replacing the filters, and maybe lubrication for the, for the uh, uh, motors and so on, or the bearings. In predictive maintenance, we don't do that. We look at the vibration. Is the vibration of the machine is high? If it's above certain limit, that means there is something wrong. And we need to look why that vibration is happening. But the machine, the beauty, that the machine is still working. We did not switch it off yet. So while the machine is working, it's giving us indication that there is something wrong happening and we need to maintain that part before the failure happens. And the same thing can be for the oil analysis or the, the, the winding temperature of the motor. You might find that the temperature is increasing, the machine is working, and there is an indication that something is wrong. We still don't know what, what, what's wrong, but at least we get to know about it before it happens. And that's the beauty of, of, of prediction. Now, the difference between both, and these two together, with the, the root cause analysis, will give us the reliability center. Um, the difference between preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance, there is very important, dif uh, important difference between both of them, that to do a preventive maintenance, 
we have to switch off the machine. So we need, because we need to clean it, we need to replace parts. So the machine will, will not be serving its objective. So if it's a server room and we have a one air unit, one air handling unit to serve it, we can't simply shut it down. We have to get an, an alternative machine to supply the air to that area by that time. Then we do the maintenance. So that's why plant preventive maintenance sometimes tend to be uh, more costly than what we expect because of the application because we have to switch it off. The traditional maintenance, the predictive maintenance, it doesn't give you an indication unless the machine is running. So that's why it's the lowest in terms of cost. If we can go to the next uh, slide, please. Now, energy-centered maintenance is a combination of that part plus what we look at is the performance of the machine. So in normal maintenance, we make sure that the machine is clean and we make sure that it has no vibration, it has no over temperature, it has the proper uh, maintenance uh, done into it. But we never know, we never check if it's delivering the intended function. Does it really give us the actual air flow rate that we need? Does it really give us the temperature that we need is the power consumption is actually as we originally designed because that by time start the machine remains reliable but it starts losing its uh, energy efficiency now in normal energy management uh, practices we usually get uh, esco companies or energy saving companies or energy management companies or consultants to do this kind of analysis or energy audits. So they come, they do that kind of inspection and they inspect their handling unit and they could tell you that these measurements are acceptable or not, excuse me. But the challenge that we found in the maintenance industry that when, when, this, when the consultants move, uh, they give us the recommendations, we implement it, we get the operation efficiency back to normal levels. And then when they leave, when they leave after some time, uh, the machines start to go back to its uh, lower performance. The reason for that is that uh, what we notice that the facility management team or the maintenance uh, team who are good in providing preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance does not have the skills to do the energy audit related uh, or the energy uh, maintenance tasks, energy management uh, related maintenance tasks. And uh, well, that brought a point that we need to educate our maintenance team um, and to train them on how to tackle these problems by time. So that's actually the trick that we're trying to, to do with the energy-centered maintenance is to change the way that the maintenance industry is, is, is running from only looking at the reliability into looking at the reliability and the energy efficiency of the equipment. So if we go to the next uh, slide, we give you a quick uh, introduction about energy center maintenance. So it's a predictive maintenance approach, as we said. It doesn't really, uh, it's not reactive. It's, it's, it's aligned with what uh, is there in the reliability centered maintenance. The difference that we measure the energy efficiency when it comes to uh, energy centered maintenance, and we make it part of the maintenance regime. We don't do it like once and we leave the building. No, that has to be part of the monthly or quarterly uh, plans. Now, um, it doesn't work without RCM because you still, if we only do the energy related uh, maintenance tasks and we forget about the reliability tasks, the machine will fail. So it might look like it's still efficient, but actually failure will happen. We'll go back to reliability to reactive maintenance or breakdown maintenance, which is not, of course, uh, the best option. So that's why these two maintenance models uh, feed into, into each other. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? Uh, that's pretty much repeated of what I have uh, said. It's all about that when we did that sort of maintenance model, we found that the industry is not really ready to, to tackle the energy-centered maintenance uh, tasks uh, with the current um, craft levels that we have. Uh, but by time, 
the model started to grow, more companies started adopting it. Uh, people found the value that, yes, I want our technicians or our maintenance te team to also understand energy management, and that started to, to evolve in the whole uh, world. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, now, this is the story, I mean, of, of, of the energy center maintenance. Uh, there is a gentleman, his name is Marvin Howell. Uh, he used to be a, 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 a lecturer in AEE as well. He was doing his part about energy center maintenance in 2012. And uh, me, myself, I was thinking about it completely in a different way in 2015. And, uh, in 2016, myself and uh, Marvin Howell, we met uh, through one of his uh, online trainings uh, that was organized by AEUS chapter. And uh, I had a chance to have a direct uh, contact with him. And then we decided that we, since we both have interest in the same subject and we think in a similar way, we decided together to pick uh, to put our knowledge in, in one book. And in 2017, I guess uh, we published our uh, first book about energy centered maintenance, which helped um, many organizations to to take uh, to take the, the, the knowledge that that that's in this process. Uh, if we can go to the next uh, slide. Now, energy centered maintenance is actually a process. So it's not uh, it's not only that you bring a machine and uh, we do take the measurements and that's it. No, it's it's a little bit beyond that. Um, since we are talking about, and I'll take you through uh, most of these uh, steps. Um, uh, since we're talking about uh, the energy consumption and we think about buildings, uh, in energy center maintenance, we are concerned about the equipment that are high in energy consumption. And I'll give you an example in, in UAE. Uh, we have um, uh, the air conditioning system, of course, is, is our highest energy co consumer because we keep the air conditioning running 24-7. So from an energy-centered maintenance perspective, and the equipment that are connected to the air conditioning system are critical for our model. While, uh, for example, if we look at uh, rainwater pumps that we have it in, in, in some of our infrastructures, we, we, it doesn't really uh, rain much uh, here in this uh, region of the world. So uh, it runs maybe for a few days a year only. And that doesn't really make it an, um, a, 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 an, an, an important asset when it comes into energy centered maintenance model. So we as energy managers uh, or maintenance professionals, we should also decide which assets we need to implement the energy centered maintenance model at. Because if that asset doesn't really uh, serve much in terms of energy consumption, it's good to continue with the reliability centered maintenance. It's actually, it's a must to continue with the reliability centered maintenance, but you might not need, need to invest in it from uh, energy management point of view. However, yani most around 80 to, 80 to 85% of the equipment are actually critical when it comes into energy consumption. So we need to define or identify which equipment are, are energy critical, and that's the first step. Then when we say that uh, the machines actually are, are performing less than what they're supposed to perform, that means we have a benchmark. We need to say, compared to what, what is the flow rate, a normal flow rate, let's say, on average, of an air handling unit should be around 1,200 uh, liters per second. And uh, when we measure it, it's, it's now around 1,100. So the baseline is, which is the 1,200, where it came from. It came from the testing and commissioning data, or maybe it came from the uh, design data that we have. So also we need to set that benchmark. So we need to collect the data that are related to the energy consumption of that equipment. Uh, then we know now the machine, if it's an air handling unit. We know that the performance uh, parameters of the air handling unit is defined, we know what will should be the flow rate, the power consumption, the water temperatures, and so on. And then we come and say, what are the types of the energy uh, inspections that we need to do? 
And uh, to do that, we defined in some cases energy center uh, maintenance inspections that needs to be done for every kind of equipment. Now, in the maintenance industry, and this is something you can find online, the maintenance tasks that we do in any equipment, you can find it in SFG20. So there is a reference called SFG20, and that has all the maintenance tasks that has to do with the reliability. In energy management inspection, that does not that's not available. And the uh, I mean just before we start the model, so we started talking to energy auditors and experts, and we asked them what kind of maintenance tasks that we need to do in order to make that uh, model successful. And we defined it, and we it's there in the book, and there is an example moving forward in this presentation. So we identified what inspections needs to be done and the frequency of these inspections, and we identified what kind of tools and uh, uh, craft. Now, that was, again, a challenge because in the normal maintenance, uh, practice, you need an um, electrician to do the electrical part of the of the maintenance for the air handling unit. But to measure the air flow rate, a normal maintenance technician won't be able to do it. So we needed uh, someone with higher skill to do that. And these guys are actually our energy auditors are who, are who are the capable team to do that. So they started teaching the mechanical technicians on how to do that. So we lifted up the craft and the skills and we used tools like thermometers to measure temperatures, anemometers to measure flow rates and manometers to measure speed and so on. And so that's also part of the process. Then. What happened next that we were able to um, measure the current performance of the machine. So eventually we, we collected the data in the first step. We know what is the benchmark. We measured it now with a simple energy audit process and we were able to judge whether the performance is acceptable or not. At this point of time, if the performance is acceptable, that means we're doing good maintenance. We just need to keep uh, maintaining, uh, taking this kind of energy centered maintenance inspections. If not, we identify the root cause of a problem, then we solve it and we restore the machine back to its uh, original performance and we make it part of our maintenance uh, uh, regime. So that's a very quick uh, highlight about the how the process uh, moves. And uh, and interestingly, maybe later on uh, in, a, in another presentation, we'll be talking about how you can even automate this process, which is the subject of the next uh, edition of the book. So uh, putting all these uh, things together, uh, we were able to, uh, if we can go to the next uh, slide, please, able to, to put a, a, a proper presentation uh, or process in place to implement the system. Now, the energy classification code, this is an extract from the book where we uh, gave the equipment a rating. Now, if a machine is low, has the rating of one and two, and there is a way how to calculate this number. So it's not uh, subjective, actually. It's so much objective uh, calculations. It has a, if it has a low impact on energy use, then we don't really need to include it as part of the energy center maintenance model. If it's a three or four or five, it has to be uh, part of it. Part of it. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? So, energy center maintenance is all about restoring the equipment efficiency, ensuring that the machine is running all the time in an efficient manner, not only when we do energy audit, no, it will be part of our operation. Reliability centered maintenance is about reliability, about root cause analysis, about uh, corrective actions, and so on. Um, can we move on to the next one, please? So both together, the few integrate reliability centered maintenance along with the energy centered maintenance. We get reliable equipment we get an efficient equipment. That's what you don't get if you follow e each one uh, separately. Now, people wonder if how increasing the maintenance time can save cost. Now, let's, let's go back to 
preventive maintenance for an air hanging unit will take around maybe 1.5 to 2 hours, one and a half to two hours to do a proper uh, full uh, overall maintenance. Now, an energy centered maintenance task will say approximately, I'm just giving, guessing, maybe 30 to 45 minutes. So now our maintenance time, instead of being two hours, now it's around three hours. And time is money. That means the main hours increased. So our maintenance cost will increase. And that's correct. But what happened that the, the, the single time maintenance will increase, but the number of maintenance times will drop. So if you do normal plant preventive maintenance, we have to maintain the air handling unit, let's say, five times every year. Each time is two hours, that's 10 hours. If we do, uh, and that's what our practical experience uh, proved, if we do an energy centered maintenance, uh, along with that uh, preventive maintenance, it's enough that we do it three times a year. So three hours into three times, that's nine hours. So actually reducing the frequency and increasing the prediction and the energy efficiency. So the overall maintenance cost uh, goes down. Um, can we go to the next the presentation? Yeah. So this is an example of an air handling unit where we do the measurements. Now what you see here is an extract from uh, BMS in some cases, and we applied some of the uh, pressure or, or sensors, and we were able to measure the flow rate. We make sure that the uh, supply temperature is acceptable. Now that's all can be linked to, to the BMS and give us alarms to, so we make it more uh, predictive. Now to do a, again a, a, a simple maintenance, uh, preventive maintenance uh, task, you will find that we have to clean uh, the back pre filter and the back filter. We need to maybe flush the cooling coil yeah, and uh, fix it and so on. And we need to maintain the the, the motor or the fan, uh, but that, and that's what you can find in SFG20. If we go to the next uh, presentation, uh, next uh, slide, uh, and again, this is an extract of the book. Uh, the first column will tell you what kind of maintenance inspections. And if you see here, we used the word inspection. We didn't use the word task because we're actually not, not doing any sort of uh, rectification yet. We're just measuring. So we measure the airflow rate of the machine. We said if it's within 5% of the uh, testing and commissioning uh, values, then that's acceptable. You don't need to do uh, any special uh, maintenance. However, if it's, if it's uh, beyond that value and you have some problems that's happening, uh, let's say low air flow rate. Apparently, the low air flow rate will have some uh, reasons to do it, um, so like increase in static pressure. So, in that case, we still did not do any preventive maintenance, but we know from this problem and that measurement that could be uh, increase in static pressure. And to 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 fix that problem, we check the dampers, the filters, the um, maybe the uh, um, coil itself is blocked and so on. So what we try to do is to share everything that needs to be done for all kinds of equipments within the building. In the building, we talk about, if I'm not mistaken, around maybe 40 or 50 equipment. This is what needs to be done and to do it as a part of energy-centered maintenance. Uh, so. Uh, the, the, the model that we have, along with the maintenance task in SFG20, for example, both together will give you really a real uh, picture of how to do uh, things. Can we go to the next uh, slide? Now, this is a schematic diagram of automating some of these things. Now, this was uh, quite interesting because when we implemented the model the first time, there was, um, as I mentioned, need for upscaling the, the team uh, skills to, to be able to do the measurements. And we had to invest in terms of time, to spend more time in the maintenance uh, to, to get into this kind of information. 
um, by time we started thinking how we can eliminate these maintenance inspections from being human-based uh, inspections, and we try to automate it. Uh, so we defined some sort of uh, schematic diagrams for every kind of equipment. And what you see in red here is actually the uh, in the red color the sensors and the tools or the meters that we need to install as part of the energy-centered maintenance model. Now this requires an investment. So uh, I'm still studying how feasible it will be for existing buildings, but it's definitely feasible for new buildings to have this kind of, uh, of sensors. If we do that, the maintenance inspections uh, that we used to do manually is no longer needed. We can just get the information on the BMS and from there we uh, take uh, the, the actions. Can we move to the next slide, please? Okay, so here, uh, this is an example uh, also for energy centered maintenance. So in this one, uh, I challenged myself and I said, okay, how much time we can reduce the maintenance inspection time by automation? So the first, uh, these are the same tasks that you see in the previous uh, slide or two slides ago uh, that we do it. In a normal PBM time, it will take to do all of them around 145 minutes as a minimum. If we install sensors, if you see the PDM duration now, uh, where in some cases we were able to drop the time to 85 minutes by introducing kilowatt hour meters or temperature sensors and, and other stuff. And uh, that was enough to drop the time by around 45%. So that's a huge drop in terms of uh, uh, maintenance hours. But what it requires from the experts is to calculate what is your investment cost, because these sensors, which you see it in the last column, uh, will cost, uh, of course, some money to install it. So it doesn't really worth it or not. It's for sure um, uh, over the life cycle of the asset, it's very, very cost efficient. Uh, now, if we go to the final, I guess, slide, we have uh, implemented it in one one of our molds, and uh, we found that our energy-centered maintenance was able to drop our maintenance cost by 30%. Um, so that was a huge amount of saving uh, by implementing it. The, the 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 achievement came from the fact that we were able to reduce the number of maintenance times, the frequency of the maintenance, after we started measuring the energy efficiency of the machine or the performance of the machine. So that's the, the, the change. Instead of measuring the reliability, measure energy efficiency. If the machine is delivering its uh, intent, intended function, that means it's reliable. There is no chance that the machine is energy efficient but not reliable. But there is a chance that a machine that is reliable but not energy efficient. So that's why we do it here uh, backward. In fact, everything improved. So the machines remained reliable 100%, never failed. The uh, machine remained up, always working and running 24 hours. And here I'm talking about, by the way, maybe three years now of implementation. Uh, equipment efficiency increased from 94% to 99.8%, we almost restored it completely. The energy cost of the overall energy cost of the machine dropped by 3.9%. Uh, and the productivity, which is the last uh, number, of, this is the productivity of the team who are doing the maintenance. When they started doing a new maintenance task, it shooted up to 92%. This is one of the highest in the world that your team is 92% productive, that means we're actually reducing uh, costs. Uh, if we go to the next uh, slide, please. So altogether, ECM is all about making sure the equipment are efficient. It enhance and prolong and make the life cycle of the asset longer. It is very cost effective. As long as it works with reliability-centered maintenance, we eliminate the root cause of, of, of uh, the failures. It improves the staff competency. This is very important. 
people like it because they started doing new things that they don't usually do. It was a challenge at the beginning, but by time they found the value for themselves. And from there, their team members uh, improved. That didn't come uh, from, uh, I mean, it wasn't easy to implement the model. If we can go to the last slide, uh, Alberto, thank you. Uh, we had challenges. We had initial cost to, to invest, uh, try. I mean, taking risk to implement the system without knowing how successful it will be. Uh, the training for the team, we had to invest money to teach them. And how mature the system is, what if we went uh, wrong? And of course, there is always an area of improvement. So it was successful. So all of these challenges, by time, we were able to overcome it. And if I go to the last uh, slide, uh, that's all. I mean, what you see on the left side, the energy center maintenance is the manual side of doing things. Um, hopefully, in June uh, this year, we will uh, launch uh, the second edition of the book, which is no longer energy centered maintenance, it's now data driven energy centered maintenance. So, in the second book, you will find everything that was there in the first book, plus uh, more details about artificial intelligence and machine learning and how we can uh, leverage into that kind of uh, technologies to help us in the energy centered maintenance model. Uh, that's all for me. I'm, uh, I'm, I hope I was clear and I'm sorry if I was going uh, too fast. Uh, and again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to present and to be with you. And I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any of them. Oh, we can't hear you, Alberto. I think you are uh, muted. Thank you very much, Fadi. It was a pleasure for me to, to make this presentation. <laughs> and thank you to everyone that uh, was here to learn how interesting is this, this uh, novel uh, technique about uh, the energy center maintenance and how we can save energy, as you said. It's very interesting, uh, the quantities that we are able to obtain and time savings that we have. We have several challenges to, to improve and, and to, to make our best in this, in this field. So uh, let's have, if we have uh, any questions about the people, uh, questions, any questions that you want to do? Someone? that wants to say something. Okay, then. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fadi. It was a very clear presentation. I think that it was uh, perfect. Uh, I have too many questions about the different equipments, but they are very technical because uh, obviously, I, I think that uh, the selecting the chosen of the of the true instrument that you need is uh, very important in the in the different cost that uh, later you save. So if you are wrong in the selection of the different measurement types, probably you will uh, have uh, very bad values in the savings that you are going to to earn. So. Uh, I don't know if you have study, study something about this uh, sensibility effect in the uh, selection of the, of the different instruments that you use to measure the energy in the different facilities. Of course, yes. This is a very, very good question and very important uh, part of, of what we do. Um, what the, the, the tools that we use it uh, has, uh, we have a part of our uh, requirements is to have the calibration happening uh, on time. That's one thing. Uh, and we, we sometimes also, it, uh, what we do, we compare assets to assets. If in our buildings, we have um, repeated machines. So it's the same standard machine. You might find five or six of it. So the performance is pretty much uh, similar. 
So what we do, we have a, a, a calibrated inst instrument that are used for the measurements, and also we do some sort of direct benchmarking between these machines, which they look uh, like. So we have two levels of, of uh, valid validation. And it is the key, because if the measurement is wrong, everything that has been studied will be definitely, definitely wrong. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, I have another question, if you let me. Uh, um, you have you have applied the the method in a in a climate that that very uh, relatively easy to measure the power and to show the effect of a byte maintenance or a failure with the with the uh, modification of the efficiency or the change in the energy consumption. But for example, I don't know if uh, illumination lighting uh, we could have the same effect. For example, in this in this point because. Sometimes uh, it could be more uh, more broken, more uh, we don't show mm. the difference between the maintenance and the energy consumption when the light is the gradient. I don't know if you have yeah. to make something in this in this chapter. Yeah, uh, uh, we 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 touch based on the um, from electrical point of view, we touch based on the efficiency of the. Um, equipments that, that run the mechanical equipments. For example, variable frequency drive is an, is, a, is an equipment that has a certain efficiency also that we need to maintain. Uh, when it comes into lights, to answer uh, your questions, uh, lights are not maintained. We, no, no one man, do maintenance for a light. Light is a run to failure uh, element. So I won't say that it's part of the energy centered maintenance model, no, but it's part of definitely any energy management model or energy audit model that we need to select a most uh, recent uh, LED technology that has the lowest power consumption and so on. Okay, uh, thank you Fadi, thank you very much for your help and it was a pleasure for me to, to be with you and everything is okay. Thank you very much Fadi. My pleasure. Vale. Thank you for having me with you, gentlemen. Take care. Ladies Muchas and gracias a todo el mundo y todos los presentes por estar aquí. Espero que hayas disfrutado y podamos continuar con otras, con otras presentaciones. If I just can uh, thank uh, Guillermo for your uh, message. I can see it on the screen. And I just say hi to your kids, Alberto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> It's why, it's why, that's normal. That's why I told you I don't want to put my camera on. But... Okay, yes. <laughs> See you soon. Okay. Stay safe. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Fadi. Gracias, Alberto. Un gusto saludarte. Un gusto saludarte. Buen placer que estés por aquí. Me alegro mucho gracias. que estés con nosotros. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Bye, bye. Bye.